So the city of Calgary has just approved its Home is Here 2023 housing strategy for Calgary's housing crisis. Now, this is a very interesting and controversial topic, so I really want to bring this to your attention to encourage you to do your research as well as reach out to your local ward to voice your concerns. My name is Adam Fife. I'm a Calgary real estate agent. I record monthly videos talking about the housing market as well as rental increases every single month. So if you have any questions, go through my YouTube channel, look at some of that, and then reach out. But if you're actually looking at making a difference in Calgary, I would encourage you to reach out to your local ward with this map here. This map overlays the ward zoning. So find out who the local MP is in that ward and then actually reach out to them. So what is this housing strategy? Some people have not even heard of it. There is five outcomes from this newly approved strategy. Okay, Increase housing supply, support affordable housing providers, support the city's housing subsidiaries, ensure housing choices meet the needs of equity deserving populations, meet the affordable housing needs of indigenous people living in Calgary. So the strategy incorporates the 33 actions recommended by the Housing and Affordability Task Force and a handful of additions um, of new actions in addition to the 38 uh, previously council approved actions for work that is already underway. So. I'm gonna try and push through this pretty quickly because I'd imagine this video is going to be quite long and I'm hoping that it's not. But this strategy is going to cost Calgarians nearly 60 million once, 27 million yearly, and 10 million in capital costs per year. As a Calgarian who pays taxes, I think it's quite important for you to understand what this strategy is and if it's going to get approved. I will throw out that the final approval is not until Q2 of 2024. So if you're watching this at a later date, make sure that you are doing your research, hopefully before that decision is made, so they can make amendments that best reflect the wants and needs of actual Calgarians. So why is the city doing this? Housing need in Calgary. According to the city of Calgary's definition, a household is in need of affordability when housing um, affordability housing when it earns less than 65% of Calgary's uh, median income, and the median income is about 85000 and spends more than 30% of that income on shelter alone. Okay, so that's Calgary's definition. The 2023 housing needs assessment used data from 2021 federal consensus to determine housing need in Calgary. According to this data in the line with the Calgary's definition, 84,600 households are in need of affordable housing options. Basically, the percentage of households in need of affordable housing has remained constant around 17 to 18% over the past three decades. However, the absolute number of housing in need has doubled. And based on Calgary's forecast population growth and historical rate of housing need, the number of households in need of affordable housing is expected to reach about $100,000 in 2026. Rise in rents, rise in house prices, rise in interest rates, rise in groceries, inflation. There's a lot of people that are going to struggle. So the city of Calgary is going to try to make some sort of fast actions to make a real difference. One in five households in Calgary cannot afford their house. So you know what? It might not be the best plan forward, but I do praise the city of Calgary for actually taking this seriously and, and getting and buckling down and making decisions. So rental vacancies were 6% in 2020 versus the 3% in 20, 2022. I would argue that the vacancies are around 2% right now. It is absolutely insane how um, and many people show up at rental open houses. The average rent between 2020 and 2023 increased by 40%, I believe that. The average price for a single detached home in 2020 increased by 37% in 2023, I also believe that. I've been recording videos every single month. Um, an annual income of 84,000 is needed to adequately afford the average market rent in 2023, okay? So the annual income, so that means either it's both people or one person to just afford the average market rent right now. Household income of 156,000 is needed to adequately afford the median cost of a detached home of 645,000 for first-time home buyers in 2023. I can't see a lot of first-time home buyers spending $645,000 on a house. They're more or less going to buy a semi-detached apartment or a, a townhouse. But regardless, that is what's needed to buy a single family home. And that's not even including debt. Uh, there's so much debt in Canada that if you have any sort of debt, right? Credit card debt, line of credit debt, car debt, you know, that income is gonna have to be higher. So home is here is the housing strategy that Calgary has put forth. Now, these are the five outcomes 
of that strategy plan. And I'm only going to touch on one C because that is where the most controversial um, uh, changes are being made. Amend and streamline planning process, uh, planning policy and process to allow for diverse housing. Okay, let's start diving into that. So um, just before we start to get into this, I just wanted to quickly go over HATF is the Housing and Affordability Task Force. So when you see that on the policy, you can know that if you are going to make your publicly or your, your voice publicly heard, it's good to reference the Housing and Affordability Task Force. It's very important. New is new administration um, or new proposals. Continue, continue. Now is within the one year and new or next is within the next two years. So what are the objectives of this? Okay, so they want to amend and streamline the planning policy. So basically a measurement of success here is a greater diversity of housing forms are developed across all communities, okay? Not select communities, all communities. And that's one of the most controversial portions of this entire thing. Now, again, you can see I'm on page 10. The next page here is 21. So I would encourage you go and read this document on your own. I will upload it to my Google Drive. It'll be free for everyone to download. Just go and visit the link and read it on your own. So basically there's a few things, there's some subsections that I'm gonna to touch on here. So 1C2, rescind the single detached special policy area in the guide to local area planning and relevant uh, statutory plans immediately. Basically, what it means is that each area or each community has to have, I believe it was 15% single detached homes in that entire community. So that when a new community is developed and built and planned, they need to have 15% of those homes, single detached homes. They're looking to rescind that. They're looking to remove that completely, um, which is interesting. Um, I could touch on that a little bit more, but that's not the most important thing here, but it's very important to know. So um, 1C4, okay? Make the base residential district row ground oriented with guidance for single semi-detached row townhouses into a single land use district, okay? Basically meaning that um, the baseline for a lot of lots that to my understanding are 50 foot wide which are a lot of lots in calgary to have this as their base zoning right now rc1 means that they have a dwelling for one family this dramatic change alone will change it to a possible eight units okay they want to enable secondary suites and backyard suites on one parcel of land Meaning that, again, if you have a big enough lot, it's automatically, you are going to automatically get approved for the zoning aspect of building a secondary suite. So you still need to go through your development process. You still need to put plans in place and those plans need to get approved. But the zoning for a secondary suite in a backyard suite is going to basically be avoided. Okay. Now, I do want to point out that a public hearing would be required following by city council approval by the amended bylaw. So the vote, I believe, is in Q2 2024. So if you're watching this at a later date, hopefully you're not watching past 2000 and Q2 2024, but your voice can be heard between now and then. Now, 1C5 is ensure parking minimums do not act as a barrier to affordability, including uh, considering location and different residential land use districts in evaluating, uh, reducing, or eliminating minimums. So basically eliminating the minimums is the key factor for this entire subsection. Making dwelling units in all multi-residential land use districts permitted used to enable simplified approval processes. So not only do they want to increase RC1s to a possible of eight dwellings on one lot, they also want to eliminate the minimums for parking requirements. Now, if I'm reading that incorrectly, feel free to let me know. But from what I see here, that's kind of wild, okay? Again, on the bottom right, approval of the new land use bylaw will require a public hearing and council decision. The one thing that I've found with council hearings is that 50 people show up or 100 people show up, you know, expressing their concerns. Out of a city of 1.4 million people, if 5,000 people showed up to these, you know, public hearings, that would be amazing. There would be a lot more pull if more people showed up to these things and said, whoa, we don't want our community to turn into this craziness. If they're going to have one single family turn into eight dwelling units with no parking minimums, your street parking is gone. 
Okay, so just consider that. Now, when we're looking at RCG, let's kind of dive into that. So what is RCG? I'll link it in the description, but this is the uh, terms and explanations from the city of Calgary. This is really good because it has hyperlinks within this explanation, so you can kind of hop around the website and get a little bit of a deeper dive. But Federation of Calgary Communities has given a very nice, easy to read explanation. A land new district that allows for row style housing. This land use zoning was recently revised by the city to accommodate front and rear units on a parcel plus a separate garage. An RCG parcel would have a maximum of four units on a typical 50 foot lot with the potential for each unit to have a secondary unit, meaning eight units. Now a subzoning type RCGEX would exclude the suites. So if you see RCG, you could have four units plus four secondary units and an RCG is just four units flat. RCG can be located on corner lots or mid block lots, which is basically every lot for the most part. Uh, the, house, the homes could be in a row or have front back units as pictured in the drawings below. So here's two diagrams for you. So this is a very obvious, um, uh, fourplex. Now the difference with this fourplex is that none of these have secondary units. If you want some of the secondary units, you're going to see a little kind of walk down concrete area fenced off with a small porch below grade. Now this is a really interesting diagram because this is what a mid block would look like with two lots in the front, two lots in the middle, and then parking in the back. If they remove the parking minimums, we might not have parking in the back. So that's also very interesting and I'd like some clarity on that. But this is very fascinating because you go from one single family property to a potential of four dwellings on that same lot. Four plus four, which is eight actually. So can this be built next to me? Again, Foundation of Calgary Communities. Currently parcels are already zoned. RCG are concentrated around Bowness Montgomery Main Streets, which I personally see, the 17th Ave Main Street, and Westbrook and Banff Trail LRT stations. However, any property owner in Calgary can apply to change the land use zoning for their property if the land use is approved by City Council. Um, then they can move to the next step of the development permit. So if they blanket everything, they just skip to that development permit. They just say, oh, you know what? I'm going to hire an architect and a planner and I'm going to do the drawings and I'm going to see if this actually works. They don't know. They don't need to go through that hassle of rezoning because it's already going to be done. All land use changes uh, applications rezonings are decided by council on a parcel by parcel basis. RCG is a, uh, is a discretionary use, meaning that the community will be um, circulated for comments and notice will be posted on the site soliciting feedback in the development permit process. So there still is a full process, but basically they're cutting the red tape and they're allowing more people to actually build these higher density homes in every community. Whew. Okay, so that's a lot to unpack. And there is a lot of information there that I think is going to frustrate many people. So with that being said, let's continue on here to 1C6, Complete City Initiative um, uh, Land Use Redesignations by Q2 2024 to RCG as the base residential district across Calgary, basically changing RC1 to RCG. So implement over time. Uh, city initiated land use redesignations for housing ground oriented HGO in completed local area plans where appropriate. We'll touch into HGO in a second, as well as establish an initiative program of at least one thousand or sorry ten thousand dollars per unit per secondary suites to produce at least four hundred new units um, each year. So there will be a, it sounds like there will be a grant if you wanted to build your own secondary suite or your own garage suite. It sounds like there could be a grant that could be in place for you to get um, funding to help that. Um, so let's dive into HGO. What is HGO? HGO is a new housing district for, uh, for the center and inner city that allows a range of grade oriented housing. This district adds the option of higher intent, um, intensity redevelopment than that of RCG, but still maintains uh, direct ground level access to all homes. So higher density, but they all need to be ground level. So it can't be an apartment. You can't go into a common area, go up second floor, and then you go into your unit. It has to be ground level. So what I read here is that there could be eight units, and then there could be eight secondary units for 16 suites in total. 
right? Where can HGO go? Focus on this district is along busier streets with amenities close by. There are two ways to determine the appropriate uh, location of HGO through an approval local area plan and using location criteria in areas without a local plan. So again, important for you to look up your community and go to your community association and see what your local plan is. Every community is different, but with enough research and dedication, you will be able to find that information. So as you can see, Lack of parking, HG or RCG as well as HGO could be a very dramatic shift in Calgary's look and feel throughout the entire city. So what are these next steps for the rezoning? So they've approved the plan with a few amendments. I encourage you to read through the plan yourself. Basically, what happens now is there's a prep, so they're going through and they're preparing. They're going to notify all of you homeowners that have the eligible uh, land use zoning change. They're going to notify you by mail. Then they're going to have a public hearing of council, which I strongly recommend every single person attend. I will link the public hearing below in the description. I'll go right to the city of Calgary. Hopefully you can find the schedule there and you can go attend it yourself. If the council approves the rezoning at the public hearing, landowners will require a development permit for discretionary development permits. Calgarians will have the opportunity to provide feedback on the proposed development permit. So basically, you skip the rezoning. You just give your development permit. I can almost guarantee that people are going to pre-plan development permits to have, to have this ex, uh, expectation that it's going to be rezoned. And then once the development permit is approved, the sign goes up. I think it's 90 days, you got um, your, your neighbors can kind of voice their concerns and then it's going to be built. So I went through a lot and that is a long video and there is a lot of information to digest. There is some very, very big changes coming to Calgary and I strongly recommend every single one of you get in touch with your local MP and voice your concerns and just give the city as much feedback as possible. In certain areas, this makes sense to me, and I'm very happy to see the city going through with something like this, but having it the entire city blanketed is, is a pretty gnarly approach. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. My email will be across the bottom here, but I strongly recommend that you reach out to your local ward and voice your concerns. So. My name's Adam Fife. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I, I tried my best to explain it in a way that is detailed and encourages you to do your own research. If you've made it to the end, comment I've made it. I really appreciate all the support. If you want to watch market reports and the actual numbers for Calgary, because this will definitely affect home prices. If you're curious about that, subscribe to the channel. Look at my videos. I record them every single month. Give me some feedback, comment below, like the video. Thank you very much. I'm going to get off. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.